Hi guys. Well, it is a hot, sticky, going back to wet bulb kind of summer day here in the collapse of everything at Bugs in a Jar Farm on this wilting, it is a Saturday, it is just now noon on Saturday, and that would be July 13th. 2024 and uh, I guess the high today was supposed to be 86 we have already passed the high by noon and uh, heading to God knows where uh, but I do feel a little bit of breeze beginning but anyway I am sitting here escaping the the cloud of uh, these goddamn biting flies. I mean, we've got deer flies, horse flies, regular other flies. Uh, the mosquitoes have been uh, worse than they've probably ever been here at Bugs in a Jar. And uh, the lightning bug show is quickly petering out, but that's to be expected. We just came off a an absolutely magnificent lightning bug explosion and uh, I was having coffee watching the honeybees pollinating the hosta blooms and uh, listening to all of the birds the uh, out singing. I guess we still have some birds singing at high noon and uh, so anyway it's a little bit ironic that I'm cowering, I'm cowering in the brand new screened porch here at Hummingbird Tiny House to talk about the insect apocalypse. Uh, the uh, why is it? I guess only the good bugs are disappearing. It seems like there there's more bad bugs than there's ever been. Uh, looking at these dead. Uh, ash trees from uh, that bug and they had the goddamn this thing this bug called a uh, what's it called a, a a bud some sort of the eating of the flower buds uh, good lord no sign of an insect apocalypse that bugs in a jar so I guess this story uh, from goodoldmedium.com from the Pathless Pilgrim, the Pathless Pilgrim, I, I think he is uh, from England, not, not sure. This is some classic Doomer porn. See, this is the kind of Doomer porn that I miss so much, taking my week off of... Uh, doom scrolling you know so much doomer porn is is kind of like I, I don't know I guess the modern regular porno where you, you know where they just get right into the doom and gloom there, 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 there there's no build up to the doom and gloom uh, they just get right into the porn and which is uh, more and more what doom scrolling is but I appreciate the pathless pilgrim taking the uh, the old style doom porn approach uh, you know framing the doom and gloom you know kind of like a horror story where you know starting out with how everything is uh, pink unicorns and uh, you know everything's coming up daisies and all of this and then bringing in Jason uh, with his knife uh, in the middle so thank you Pathless Pilgrim for uh, writing doom porn the way doom porn is supposed to be written and he just titles his uh, today's essay in medium.com the beginning of the end this 
is what ecological collapse looks like. Take it away, Pathless Pilgrim. We went for our usual sunset walk this evening, my wife and I. We held hands as we walked down the lane between the barley fields like young lovers again. The barley is indescribably beautiful at this time of year. Still a vivid pale green in most places, darker in others, and a thousand verdant hues in between. The long beards of the grain pointing up at the sky soften the contours of the crop like a soft focus filter as it ripples caressed by the gentle breeze. You almost feel as though you could reach out and brush your hand across the surface like a plush velvet throw. We both looked up as a swift crossed our path overhead, quickly followed by two more, three swifts. Uh, I'm pretty sure a swift is a kind of swallow. Uh, we call them swallows over here on this side of the pond. Three swifts, narrowing my eyes I scan the sky above the barley fields and stands of mixed woodlands in all directions. I strained to catch the telltale screams of a nearby flock feeding on gnats in the last warmth of the evening sun, but there was only silence as the trio scythed away from us and disappeared from view. Not so long ago, there would be clouds of swifts. Every summer at this time in the evening, they would twist and glide in huge flocks, calling out shrilly to each other. But that was back in the day when their only food source airborne insects was plentiful before the insect apocalypse. This year there are three and next year we clutch each other's hands a little more tightly as we walk a melancholy air now hanging over us. Now that the swifts are gone Nothing moves over the fields. No bees, no butterflies, no early evening moths, no flying beetles. The breathtaking beauty of the scene is like an image created by AI that neglected to put in the little details that make it realistic. In silence, we turn and head homeward, the sun still well above the horizon. The local council, to their credit, have left the roadside verges uncut, and there are plenty of thistles, ragwort, and wild parsley in full flower. The flower heads and umbrals should be covered in butterflies and bees flies, moths, soldier beetles, and cardinal beetles. Nothing. Like the barley fields, they look stunning, but are barren and lifeless as an artist painting. Our own garden is redolent with the sweet, heady aroma of Budleia. I've never heard of some kind of flower in England called Budleia. In previous years, I have written about the heavenly clouds of assorted butterflies that would swarm on these shrubs. Red admirals, tortoise shells, peacocks, 
painted ladies, speckled woods, brimstones, large whites, common blues. Attracted by the bright nectar-filled blossoms of our many mature Budlea, they would erupt in a swirling miasma of color whenever we stepped out onto the patio, then settle around us like living petals in a hallucinogenic dream. It really was magical. This year, not a single one. It's happening, people. The insects are disappearing. The birds are following them to oblivion. We will be next. This is the beginning of the end. And there you go. Uh, <clears throat> thank you, Pathless Pilgrim, for starting my day out uh, <clears throat> with a good dose of doom porn <clears throat> before I had to flee inside the screened porch to get away. <clears throat> this is one of these. So this thing... I think what this bee is, is called a, uh, oh shit, I can't remember the name of that bee, it's a native pollinator, it's not a honey bee, I am uh, having a complete senior moment, he seems to be trapped inside, trying to get back, to looking for something to pollinate, and uh, actually uh, seeing the honey bees as I was reading that, it might be the first time this summer the honeybees are out. The, the bumblebees have been very busy. And uh, so I don't know. Maybe I am uh, just, uh, just lucky here at Bugs in a Jar. The insect apocalypse, a mixed bag. Uh, you know, I, on the 4th of July, there is this uh, young woman, probably half my age, if not less than half my age, traveling through Bugs in a Jar Farm. Uh, and the 4th of July is when the lightning bugs, some people call them fireflies, really hit their peak. And uh, <clears throat> so we were walking down the the road during the peak of the lightning bug show I, I mean with just clouds swarms of uh, the these lightning bugs she was absolutely she could not believe she, she told me that that was the greatest wildlife spectacle she had ever seen in her life uh, she grew up in New Jersey, and uh, in rural New Jersey, you know, where she says that they have bears in the yard and stuff. And, uh, you know, she's saying there's a few lightning bugs, but she never knew that what a real lightning bug show is supposed to look like. Never seen anything like it in, in her life, and... Uh, so she was just uh, absolutely amazed and, you know, riding high on the, uh, on the lightning bug show. And, and of course, I, in being the doomer that I am, I, I, I just could not help myself. And uh, I, mason bees, that's what that bee is, is a mason bee. But anyway, I couldn't help myself and, and, and I just had to bring up the insect apocalypse. We're going to walk outside and see if we can, I think it might even be too hot in the sun for the pollinators. You know, I, I could not stop myself 
for bringing up the insect apocalypse there in the middle of the greatest wildlife spectacle she had ever seen in her life. And uh, she had never heard the term. You know, this is a college-educated uh, Gen Z normie. Uh, these are the panicle hydrangeas. Okay, the mason bees are uh, are working the uh, the panicle hydrangeas. Oh, and there's a honeybee. Okay, we have a honeybee. Now, of course, honeybees are invasive species. They are not native pollinators. Uh, so this young woman had never heard the term insect apocalypse. Uh, so there goes a monarch butterfly. All right, the first monarch of the year. What's happening here? is these are the jopai weeds uh, getting ready to bloom a, a month early. I, I saw goldenrod blooming today on uh, July 13th. So these plants are uh, about a month early as a lot of things are. Uh, and hopefully they're going to be covered with these tiger swallow tails. Uh, these Joe Pie weeds are to tiger swallow tails what uh, milkweed is to monarchs. Other the monarchs like the Joe Pie weed as well. See these yellow flowers. Not sure what these yellow flowers are. Don't see any pollinators on them. And uh, so anyway, I was, uh, as they say, this 30-year-old normie never once in her life had heard the term insect apocalypse. Uh, so I, all right, there's a butterfly on the panicle weed. I'm not sure what he is, not panicle weed, the panicle hydrangea. I was going to launch into the, uh, you know, the windshield, the insects uh, on the windshield that, uh, I get my poor hydrangea out here in the full sun. You know, I was going to start in on the old saw that us boomer doomers always go into about the windshield effect where you no longer see uh, you no longer see uh, bugs on the windshield but of course you would have had no clue what I was talking about because uh, she would have had no clue because she's never seen bugs on the windshield like I saw growing up. So look at this. So it, it's July 13th. The blackberries are coming in. Look at the size of that blackberry. Man, it is going to be one hell of a blackberry cobbler season. Uh, yeah, so I mean, you know, people 30 years old have no clue what uh, we boomers are talking about, uh, how when we were kids, how uh, when we were kids, how the... Uh, you know, the, how our windshields were splattered with, uh, with bugs and they would clog up the radiator and you used to have to hose out your radiator. Uh, yeah, all right, we have a honeybee pollinating the cucumbers. There you go. We have a real live... Can you see the the honeybee?
pollinating the cucumbers. Okay, look at this thing. Uh, don't know whether I'll get any watermelon and cantaloupe out here. Man, look at these. Uh, <laughs> look at these tomato plants. So uh, these two tomato plants are going on six feet tall and uh, this is a cherry tomato plant so this plant I got this plant about six weeks ago it was in a four inch pot and uh, now this one cherry tomato plant is eight feet tall it is eight feet tall. It is six feet wide. And here comes the bounty. Oh man, I have me a. Mm, ma'am. I just better eat my lettuce before it bolts. Okay, who is on the zinnias? There's some little guy on the zinnias. I don't don't see many pollinators on zinnias. For some reason, they don't seem to uh, attract the pollinators that much. Hmm. Go get Seahorse Tiny House ready for the upcoming guests. Oh man, look at these blackberries. Problem is, I'm not going to have a cobbler if I keep eating the blackberries, but uh, I mean, how can you resist that? I think uh, this this branch of blackberries <laughs> there's about 200 berries on that branch oh man it's too bad that this is the beginning of the end these blackberries are still blooming the thornless blackberries. Alright, I'm not going to eat any more blackberries. I'm ready for some blackberry cobbler. I highly advise you to get out there and enjoy some blackberry cobbler while you still can. Alright, well the bumblebee just flew off. We had a, a bumblebee on the blackberries. Blackberry bumblebees. Anybody else? I better come get some water on these poor impatience. Enjoy the beginning of the end while well, you still can. What do you think, little dog? Are you enjoying the beginning of the end? Say, Pop, I'm hanging out in the shade in front of the fan while well, I still can. Bye, guys.